Acts chapter 2, verse 23, um, introduces us to an idea. And I think it's a, a really important idea, and I, I want us to kind of spend a few minutes talking about it, because it's deeply connected to the rest of Scripture. And the verse is this in Acts chapter 2. It says, This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Now, we have to recognize a little bit of the history here, and I'm going to let you guys do that. I trust you to, to go through and find the history, to talk about the grammar, to, to go through the whether this is literal or metaphorical. I think it's quite clearly literal for us today. Um, but as we read this verse, there are some things that require us to do some synthesis work. And here, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And I'm going to encourage you, this is a passage that you need to understand the rest of your Bible well for. Um, Acts 2.23 is a, a pretty clear point of God's foreknowledge, of God's definite planning and sovereignty over the world. And that's important. Um, and the Bible has a lot to say about those issues. Um, I gave you a little hint passage in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 8 through 10, which I think even requires even more explanation. Um, but the explanation I'll give for you guys today as we talk about this is this. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, talks is, is written by Paul. And we know, we know this from his own introductions. And most of Paul's letters start out in kind of the same way. He greets somebody or someone, some group of people, and then he basically launches into a theolo theological discussion on Christ, on the gospel, and on the Old Testament. And so if you're reading through something of Paul, you kind of expect to see some commentary on what has happened in the history of God's people and on in, in the history of God's plan for those same people. And so something you'll recognize really quickly is this theme of God's foreknowledge, of God's sovereignty wrapping itself through the text. A couple points where this happens, Genesis chapter 3, already uh, in the in actually God's curse of the woman, he says to her, um, he says, or curse of the, um, either the serpent or the woman, uh, God promises uh, that her offspring will crush the head of the serpent. Kind of already giving you a little hint. Hey, something's going to happen. Somebody born of a woman, but but not born of both of them, because the promise isn't given there. Somebody born of a woman. Who is this sounding like? Um, already there's there's some planning going on. There's some foreknowledge going on that, that we need to understand. But it's not super clear yet. Genesis chapter 12 uh, is going to talk even more about that with the calling of Abraham. Abraham is simply called. Um, and he goes, and it just, and it happens. Uh, it's not a thing that is seemingly optional. Um, he's not said, hey, if you want to, you can come with me. Otherwise, I'll pick somebody else. He calls to Abraham, um, at that time named Abram. And so we want to recognize that. God is, God is enacting his plan in the world to bring the Christ, to bring the Redeemer uh, to his people. We see that in the book of Job. Um, all these awful things happen to Job um, because Satan has asked God that he would tempt him, and, and that God has allowed that. And then towards the end of the book, Job recognizes that God is utterly in control and sovereign over all the things that happen. In the New Testament, this is made even more clear, obviously, in books like Ephesians. Um, Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 talk at length about this. Romans talks at length about this. Um, and so there are some different understandings of that sovereignty um, that we won't go into necessarily today, but I do think if you don't believe that that God is sovereign, that you don't believe that he that he predestines at least to some point, um, and you don't believe that he has future knowledge, then you're you're you are outside of what the historical Christian position has been um, in those passages because it makes it very clear for us throughout the synthesis of the entire text, throughout reading all of the scripture, it's clear throughout that God has a plan, that God has built something, has done something specifically um, in our lives that, that, that overwhelms us, that's over us, that is more sovereign um, and a much better plan um, than what we would otherwise come up with. The, the trick to that is knowing that we know the end. 
Revelation describes for us very clearly the end state of the world, and God needs to know the end state. Um, he, he, he knows the end state because he knows the states in the middle. And so we want to recognize that um, as a synthetic principle um, that we're reading the whole Bible to understand certain passages. Um, and so hopefully that helps you. Again, I need you guys to be doing the work on the grammar, on the metaphorical, literal, on the historical, and then applying it to your own life. Um, how does that apply to your own life? Does that bring you peace? I think it, I think it should. Um, we're not going to have a practical example of this because I believe the practical is up to you. I, I think God, through his Holy Spirit and through his word, will work in your lives to apply it to you.